Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this guy right here, Fish Frenzy from Crash of Games. And uh, the designer is Brett Gilbert. So uh, basically it's a set collection game with a little bit of, uh, uh, let's see, a uh, little bit of nastiness in there. I'll get to that in just a little bit though. Uh, let's, let me show you how it's played. In a game of Fish Frenzy, the goal of the game is to get the most points. And the way you get points is by collecting sets of different colored fish cards that will give you points. If you have the most of one color, then you'll get three points. If you have the second most of one color, then you'll get one point, and so forth and so on. Uh, so the whole idea behind Fish Frenzy is collecting sets of different colors of fish. And here's how you do it. For example, a four player game is set up right here. Um, you take these different uh, fishing ship uh, cards and you place them out on the board and they are numbered uh, or rather for the different number of players that are in the game so you set them out in a certain way it's not very difficult at all of course and each player gate takes a seagull token and then four fish tokens to begin the game. The rest of their fish tokens are placed here and you'll understand why in just a few moments. There is also a first player token that is given to uh, one of the players and then the game begins. The things that you do during a round is first of all deal the fish and crab cards out. The, each boat always gets exactly two cards added to them during this round and then players take turns playing seagulls and then you can either collect your catch or eat fish. During the play seagulls phase there is basically this time where uh, for example green says I'm going to take my seagull and I want uh, these two fish right here so we're going to go here and place their seagull out there. Then yellow says, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and play my seagull out here uh, because I would like the lionfish and the eel. Then red says, all right, I'll play nice and I'm gonna go over here and take the lionfish and the roughies. All right, now blue has a dilemma because they can either come here and not contest at all but if they do so, they're going to get a crab card, which at the end of the game is going to be minus points uh, from his total. So he may not want to do that. So instead of that, he's going to say, you know what? I'm going to come over here and challenge Red for this fishing boat uh, to get that lionfish and the roughy. And in so doing, he can choose a number of his fish tokens to add to his seagull to bring his total over whatever the red player has. Well, the red player has zero right now, so he can say, well, I'm going to add two fish to my seagull. Now red has a decision to make. Either they can simply leave and say, okay, fine, you have that boat and I'll take this one over here. Or the red player can choose, no, I really want to keep this boat, so I'm going to add three fish tokens to mine, which then kicks the blue player off. All right, so they must choose another boat. Now at this time, the blue player can choose to either contest here, here, or simply go here. The problem is, is that the fish that he played on this boat stay there. They don't get to come back to him and he can play them somewhere else. So playing fish does have uh, a little bit of a risk factor to it. So what I'm going to do, what Blue is going to do is just come here and say, okay, I'll just cut my losses. Now once all the players have placed out their seagulls, now it is the time to either bring in the catch or eat. All right, so bringing in the catch simply means that you're going to take the cards that you have uh, procured and place them uh, in front of your tableau like so. And now blue has a lionfish and a crab. The yellow player gets to take both of these and they are added to theirs if they choose to catch. And then the green player would also be able to take and add to theirs as well 
and then the red player, if he wanted to, he could do the same. Just take both of these and add it to his fish. But since red played a bunch of fish, they want to get those back. And the way you do that is by eating the catch that you have. So you can always eat the rightmost fish card and you will get this number of fish from the stockpile added back to your available fish plus these up here. So in this case, if red decided to eat, they would get one, two, three, four, five fish back. Now you see that in the stockpile, red only has four fish. So you would simply take the number of fish that you can and add it to your stockpile. And then these fish would return to the stockpile and the seagulls would return back to their prospective people first player would turn and you would go again. Now this fish having been eaten will come here. Two new cards are put out and then a new round begins with yellow going first. At the end of the sort catch phase if the draw deck has been depleted then the game is over and everybody tallies points and see who comes up with the most. And uh, that's basically how the game goes. It's very simple, uh, not difficult at all. So Once you've played a few games of Fish Frenzy, uh, the, the game does also come with some uh, gold cards and event cards that uh, you'll basically only use one of each for each game, but uh, they have different things on them. Like for example, this one says, end the game as the player with the fewest different colors of fish cards and you get three extra victory points. Or if you end the game as the player with the most, three little fish cards, then you get three victory points. So they're just little different things that you kind of shoot for. There are also these event cards. Uh, for example, all players at the end of the game, each complete set of fish cards of all seven colors, you get three victory points, uh, so forth and so on. They're just different kinds of things that you can add to the game to kind of give yourself some focus or direction. So that is really Fish Frenzy. There's not a whole lot of difficulty here. As a matter of fact, there's very little difficulty here. It's a very simple game. Uh, let's get to my final thoughts. So that is Fish Frenzy. It really billets itself as a family game and I'm hesitant to call it that because of one single solitary element that is in the game and that is when you can send your seagull along with some fish to fight over a ship that is already there. And that conflict within the game, even though it's very light and it's very fun, I think takes it a little bit out of that family game element. I, tr I played it with my family and most of my family did very well, but my youngest, you know, took some time to get used to fighting over somebody else's ship. We're, we're always telling our, our kids not to fight with each other. And so when we're playing a game that encourages that, it was a little bit confusing, got a few wires crossed here and there. So for that one single solitary element, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to call it a tried and true family game. But uh, it is very family-ish, if I can put it that way. Um, uh, all of the meeples are very uh, large and chunky, making it easy to manipulate them and, and pick them up from one piece of place on the board to another and so forth and so on. It's very uh, pleasing to the eye. The theme is very uh, lighthearted and fun. So it hits on all of those family game mediums. It's just that one little element of fighting over the, over the different uh, ships that uh, makes it a little bit hard to swallow for some people in my family. Not all of them, of course. For the most part, I think this will pass as a family game uh, by and large, but it can get pretty cutthroat in that one area of the game. It is simply a set collection game um, and they don't really mess around too much with that mechanic. You are simply just trying to get the different colored fishes that are in that uh, are in your tableau and add to them as many as possible. Of course, you're trying to get the most of a few different colors so you can score a good number of points, but uh, that doesn't always work out. And of course, so you wanna stay away from the crab cards as well because they will siphon points off of your total there at the end of the game. So you do have to be careful. It is a very light, fun, easy to play game. Um, I would probably give it um, one and a half thumbs up for, family, uh, for a family game. 
Beyond that, I think I'll give it maybe one and three quarters thumbs up for uh, anybody else. Uh, but at the same time, it is very light, it is very easy, so it might not appeal to those heavier gamers that uh, want a little bit more uh, bite in their games. Uh, but as it is, I think it's a very cool game, very fun to play, and I'll give it an average of one and a half thumbs up so that uh, you will be able to enjoy it and have fun. So that is Fish Frenzy from Crash of Games. We'll see you later on the flip side.